Hey, have you guys ever heard of ReZero? Starting a starting a different life from zero, or just known as Isekai, but good. <laughs> I just finished like the second season. I was like five episodes out. Like, I started like a month ago, but then I dropped it because you know I I took a break from the season. I was like, all right, I finished season one, so I'm breaking it from now and just go pick it up like a month later. But I was I didn't realize I was only five episodes left from finishing the whole damn thing. I didn't realize how re zero just gripped me by the freaking nuts you know I, I didn't realize that I mean cause why watch ReZero well well this is this is this is pre sit down and actually binge the fucking thing from what I know ReZero I always known as the main character Subaru Natsuki just being tortured and dying the most horrible ways I, I, I thought I was playing corpse party or watching school days you know cause this man just dies like a lonely painful as death but then, post watching it, I like this shit. I, I like that Subaru is not this overpowered, aniptic god from being isekai You know, he wasn't killed in his previous life. Hell, we still don't know why he was chosen out like the literal billions, if not trillions, if not endlessly infinity universes, galaxies, solar systems, or whatever, multi multiverses. But what made it so good with Subaru is not the fact that he is just a weak jobber who will die via stiff breeze from anything. I like his character, you know? Cause we, we compare him to other isekai protagonists who are just OP from the get go, who doesn't really have to try as much to swoon just about anyone to his like to their side. It's just not a, like a fallout speech check when you like max out your speech to like 100% and boost your charisma so not everything you say will just get everyone the good ending. I like the fact that Subaru struggles. I like the fact that there's consequences for his actions and that he's only thinking about himself and not thinking about anyone else's needs. You know, like the time where the the mansion was being attacked by the witch cult and he was trying to get people at least get some reinforcements over there. And I think the one thing I remember correctly where they were, they were just pretty much telling him well, you're being stupid, Subaru. One, you're only thinking about yourself. You're only thinking about Amelia. You're not considering how our resources are going, our war effort, what, what's benefiting us. You gotta stop thinking from, this is some magical world where we're just gonna do what you say, that we're just gonna bend to your whims just because you ask if you grovel and beg for it. I mean, you had Crochet pretty much telling him that I'm not gonna save Amelia because the because the royal selection and just because he asked and say so Priscilla made that point pretty clear by kicking him in the fucking face because you know she's offering to lick his foot no lick his no offer him to lick her foot and she's like yeah if you came and do this shit and then you had Anastasia who was just using him just kind of even worse her I was like fuck bro but I'm getting ahead of myself with this it's just I just I just love that Subaru is thinking and trying he's Hell, I'm over here feeling his emotions, and I'm telling you, every time when Subaru is struggling, I feel that shit. When he's on his breaking point and when he's crying, I'm shedding a tear. For the person who wants to act so dead on the inside, because that's my kind of my, my whole stupid character thing that I, I have no emotions, that I can't cry over fictional media. Like, I'm telling you, motherfucker, I was crying my eyes out. When Subaru shed tears and cry, the first season, the second season, when he met all the witches, I'm telling you, tears were going down my face as if my family died, as if my fucking dog kicked the bucket. I'm over here like, just, just tears flowing, red eye, exhausted as hell from watching it from anime. And this is not even saying the fact that I endure watching ghetto ass Crunchyroll ads, getting like face fucked for like 12 ads per episode. Unless you got on this weird special weekend where like they only do like two ads and I'm like, thank Christ, I wanna finish this anime by like sometime tomorrow. <laughs> but but Subaru's struggling is I, I feel relatable to it. And normally when people say they relate to a character, whether it's anime or not, is not normally looked upon. But I can relate to Subaru. I can relate that he's just a jobber. He he knows that he's weak. He knows that he's not successful. He's just a bummy ass bum. I can see that. I, I like the fact that 
when he when he was asked in one episode, he was asking Rem to run away with him to go live out in the country, which honestly got a, his own spinoff light novel, if I remember correctly, or a spinoff manga. And he's just like, I'm I'm just a nobody. I have no powers. I I seen things. I have died multiple times in various horrible different ways. I am nothing but a burden to people. And yet I still expect them to suck my dick whenever I snap my fingers. Everything I do is only to help my own needs. It was never meant to help anyone else. And when I'm not treating Amelia like a fucking goddess, which makes her uncomfortable, I'm only doing it because it gives me some purpose in life and some level of attraction, some stability that the fact that I'm a fish out of water in this world of magic and demons. In this world where I constantly keep dying over and over and over again, repeatedly, horribly. I feel that. I know what that struggle is like. I've seen people in multiple different timelines where I have died, where they have died, whether it's because of my actions or someone else's. It's mentally destroying, but I still press on because I still hope that I could get the good ending and see everyone I care about still live to see the sunrise tomorrow. And that shit gets to me. Now, I know what I just said was highly exaggerated from what the anime said, but that was pretty much almost still beat for beat. Oh, it's it's just immaculate. And it makes me smile to see Subaru actually succeed and one up the people that are always against him, one up the things that are always trying to kill him that not already kill them. It's good to feel that feeling. I think season one was truly peaked anime for ReZero because watching that man die horrible bummy deaths with the saddest shit via suit like one suicide hell watching him like just just cry to fucking rem who lopped his leg off at that point was beaten half to death because she could smell the witch's scent on him and he is just bleeding for his life he's just like remember when we, we had fun we went to town we have memories and she just look at him like damn bro don't ask. I didn't care. I don't care. And like, that 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 shit made me really sad. Like, I fucking hate the music though. Like the music's so good, it fits the moment. And that happened. And then Subaru still died despite him just pouring his soul out. I mean, cause you gotta admit, it's like what season one of Re Zero was really peak Subaru action. This man is crying his soul out every time he's about to die a horrible ass death. And he's not crying, you you feel his pain. You feel him starting back from a checkpoint. That's just like a random drop in whatever he's doing. Which is honestly more terrifying because you can't take back what you've done if the checkpoint kicked in, like say if I was Subaru and I accidentally kill Rem or Ram and then I die, but then again, but then it, like the checkpoint kicks in, so their death is still real 100%, and I can't change that. It, like, that shit really hurt. It's like, no, wait, it already happened. It already happened with freaking Rem. Like, the beginning of season two, where she got her memories and, and other shit stolen. And so we tried to kill himself, and it didn't work. Because <laughs> it brought him back to the checkpoint just prior to them getting to the capital again. Which is really sad. Really fucking sad. Oh man, there's it's just so much I could talk about it, especially him meeting the witches, like Akinda and them. Like, that that was a really hard scene to watch. Oh god, it's just it's a really good anime. And then you have the sister duo, Rem and Rom, who I love so much. Rem, I know that she was just pretty much everyone's best girl of the season, because blue hair, just do anything for you waifu, a badass, a complete Subaru simp, even though... We all know the infamous scene where Subaru shot her down and completely just like, yeah, I love Amelia though. We all know, we all felt something. Hell, I felt something. And Rem's not even my best girl. It's fucking, (laughs) I'm in the Amelia slash like Ram camp. (laughs) Maybe Beatrice a little bit because Beatrice is going to fire like a Taco Bell, like at five in the morning, that kind of fire. Like we know you're hungry as hell and that shit just be indifferent. (laughs) But... (laughs) <laughs> I still felt that pain. I understand everyone's incompetence with it. Hell, it was even worse than that, that capital arc a little bit where Subaru was like, I'm a white knight the fuck out of Amelia, and I'm gonna tell you guys to eat my fucking chode. Like, full, like, like, like maximum brickness. 
I want I want the whole thing throbbing in your like esophagus. And I'm like, Subaru, I'm gonna need you to chill the hell out. You don't need a white knight this hard. I seen Redditors white knight with less maximum than this. Cause you're you're laying down this pipe with maximum delicacy right now when it comes to white knighting. And that was rough. <laughs> oh man. And then this Rom, like Rem's sister, twin sister, who's just like the most like just goes for the throat insults. I have two people in my life who already does that shit, so I could just easily just cling on to Ram so quickly. It's like, damn, I know someone could go for the throat with these underhanded ass comments. But that's not the least of it. <laughs> like, skipping her story lore, I can't believe she fucking looks Roswell. This sweet tooth from Twisted Metal ass looking honky honk clown. You like this guy? Roswell. Who everything he says in the dub always has like a weird singy song ass tune like oh I hope I didn't get distracted. I'm like bro. I don't even trust this nigga bro and I knew I'd never trust him. I knew cause courtesy of season 2 obviously. You know spoilers but not spoilers. He was aware of Subaru's repeating cycle. Like he what the what the the third only person? The, the Not third probably like the second only other person who's aware that Subaru's been repeating and dying constantly over and over again which honestly it's just like you knew this shit and you didn't do anything it's like nah i did that shit you did that shit i did that shit because what pissed me off was him sending eliza grain hard and her fucking crony to the mansion oh my god <laughs> it's like oh roswell i thought you were just that nigga but i see you're just that nigga you're just that guy you're, you're not that guy you're that guy I thought I could trust you. I thought you was gonna just be weird and assumingly foreshadowly shady, but no, you're just dead ass just shady. And like, oh, is he because he's a fucking super simp for Akenda? I know, season two's best wife with an outbeat Rem, Amelia, and Ram. It's like, eh, uh, uh, Akenda? Um, uh. Honestly, I was sipping for her pre watching ReZero, but I was like, eh. I fuck with Minerva though. I like Minerva, like the Witch of Wrath, who's always crying with blonde hair and she just fucking beats people in the fucking dirt. Like, I, I like that. Like, Kenda, she's not bad. But I feel like that she's gonna put fucking poison in my coffee for no reason. And she's like, oh, that's tough. That's real tough. <laughs> this is kind of funny saying it because, like, because I'm stepping aside for a second. You can't even trust the witches. But yet, in, Re in ReZero, they make the witches have all cool ass designs. And they all have various personalities, there's none with really like a truly malice ass personality. Such so like the Witch of Envy, who's always like, I love you, I love you, I love I mean, can you have anything in your else in your vocabulary besides I love you? I'm pretty sure you got anything else to say. You know, I'm just like, damn. They look so colorful and cool. I mean if they if they had their own spin-off like slice of life light novel, I'm pretty sure I'll I'll read it. But I keep remembering, these are witches. These are the same niggas who are going out causing body pileups. Who are evil as fuck. You can't get, you can't throw to me the lob with the Kenna who's like cool and funny and cute in some way. And then she's like, yeah, you forgot I'm a witch. I'm just that nigga. I'm gonna fuck your shit real quick. And I'm like, it's like, you're, you're making my, you're, you're making my chrome so confused, bro. Like, it's hard as iron, best from steel, and then you make it soft like fucking Play-Doh. Like, what the fuck am I, what the fuck am I jacking to? I see more consistent things in the anime. I mean, off-brand. <clears throat> but getting back from season two, what made season one especially good was, I like the story. I like the world. I think ReZero in terms of anime did pretty much perfect with this expository exposition the world building i like the system i like how there's you know certain rules and stuff there's more countries they mentioned than mall beasts i like all the witches that's pretty much forbidden the fact that subaru called amelia was the equivalent to the n-word for half elves was pretty rough as fuck <laughs> but i but you know, to get my scattered thoughts back in, because this is totally unscripted, Rezero was just simply amazing. It was beautiful. Hell, if I, if I put that in my top five, that would definitely be my number three. Damn, that's not my number, that's my number one. Because if I'm skipping out my meme entries like School Days, King Game, and whatever the fuck, Rezero is definitely my top anime. I find it enjoyable. I was... 
I was in capture. I was completely entranced for the two seasons this this ride has given me. Hell, I'm begging for a third season. Hell, I might just get my ass and go read the manga or, or read the light novels, you know? I want to know what happens afterwards. I want to know how it's going to go on now. Super's a night now. We still got to get back Rem's memories and collective consciousness so she could be back alive and everyone can remember her. You know, I, I want to know more. I want to I want to continue off. We still got so much left to do. We still got to deal with all the other like arcs, you know, bishops of sins and whatnot. And obviously, we still got to watch. You still got to watch Subaru die horrible as deaths and start over again. Clearly, because that's the whole main point of Re Zero, is embrace death, begin anew. <laughs> but I think it was worth it. I think that was worth my binging. This is like Squid Game levels of binging. Why? Like, why I stood up like all night from like one in the morning to like fucking nine o'clock in the morning watching Squid Game. And we all know how long those fucking episodes are, like an hour, almost two hours, Jesus. Very zero. It was a beautiful. Love this soundtrack, I love the colors, love the world, love the damn characters, because everyone was very unique, everyone was enjoyable, endearing at some points. Very well, very well crafted for, for, an, for a two season anime that may not get a fucking third season. I have yet to watch the OVA, but I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be diving more into Amelia after she was after she got defrosted and met Puck, and it's going to dive into that more, to Amelia's past, which I definitely should go watch. But damn, it's just amazing, you know. And like, I never has poured so much expression into this video before. I never leaked out this emotion about an anime. Because I'm not a proper anime tuber who will like spend eight hours or 800 days animating a video because of this shit. You know, because one hand, I just want to just talk about it. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the over edited bullshit. I'm just going to just be a commentary with this. And what I'm commenting is how Zero is fucking amazing. And the fact that it's probably been out for God knows decades old. ReZero is old, man. I just watched it after it's been released for both seasons. It's probably been years. Since season one came out, and it's definitely been a, a while since season two came out. And I'm just like, man, Re Zero is fire. It definitely should get a third season. Not totally echoing what everyone's been thinking for so fucking long. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> like, if I, if I be honest with that, Re Zero. No, not Re Zero. Anime as a whole. I have a bad habit of watching animes 30 years after it came out, and everyone's already talked about it, memed upon it, made a bunch of fan art. Dojin cheese off brand everything with it and I'm like oh man this is pretty fire and wants to talk about this shit <laughs> that's, how, that's how I feel when I was talking about another or like rent a girlfriend like oh man everyone talked about rent a girlfriend ah, I guess I missed uh, the social climb with that but I but I guess to wrap up this video in some capacity I think re zero is definitely worth the watch I'm talking about 100% you sit your ass down, you better endure those Crunchyroll ads that last for like 800 hours because holy shit, I counted them. I think watching like one episode with like 12 ads, and I, like by the time you watch if like five episodes, you've probably gotten more fucking ads than you were while watching a YouTube video in the same equivalent. I'm like, Jesus, what the fuck is this? But like I said, if you're lucky on Crunchyroll, if, you are, if not, you already pay for the subscription, you will get those weekends where you could get, like, beginning all the way to, like, somewhat of the last eight minutes of the f episode, or just ad-free, and then you get, like, two ads minimum, like, one right there at the eight-minute mark or so, and then, like, the last one before credits kick in, and then that's it. It's like, damn, bro. This is shit just godly. But... To wrap everything up, Razor is 100% peak anime. I want to hear no Love is War. I don't want to hear no other anime. Razor is peak. If not, if not, I think it's peak isekai animes. Because let's be honest, out of all the isekai animes, with the exception of like Rising of the Shield Hero, is pretty much just dog water. I mean, by dog water, I mean absolute steaming horse shit. I mean, if I could put the two god tier. Isekai animes, well, technically three, three, but yeah, let's put it at three. 
The three best isekai animes are obviously ReZero, Rising of the Shield Hero, and Konosuba. I would say technically two because Konosuba is more like a shit post anime. It's just kind of funny and not really serious. But it's still a good isekai nonetheless. I could be wrong, there could be better isekais, because let's be honest, I've not watched a lot of anime. I do, but not like crackhead people do. But, <laughs> I digress. Anyway, that's going to be it for the video. I might make more commentary videos about animes. Hell, I'm been watching them or I'm going to rewatch them. I'll make t I'm going to talk about those and talk about a lot of dramas. I think I might make a video about Rebecca from Cyberpunk Edge when I was like, finished watching that. I think I'm like six more episodes out and then I'm done with that thing. <laughs> Alright, that's going to be it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Till then, I bid you adieu.